What's up, Airbnb Nation? I'm Danny, and I'm excited to do this video. I've talked about level one, level two, level three on other videos, kind of just mentioned it, maybe, maybe added a little bit of information about what they actually mean. The earliest time I did this was back in November on my seven-day stay in Barranquilla, Colombia. And what levels are, they're interesting because they, they're not referring to the Airbnb host or the listing. They're not referring to the rating. Uh, it's not level one, level two, and level three does not refer to this is a three, four, a five star listing. No, it does not. It really refers to the value, if anything, not the quality. The unique thing about the levels when I mention them is that it refers to equally the host and the space. So this is a unique uh, concept. It's a powerful concept because I, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do with this concept is simplify it. This, are you level one, level two, level three? Where do you fit in? There's, there's millions of hosts. Well, how do you know where you fit in? Everyone's five star. So the real, the real, the real quality comes when I'm going to discuss level two and level three because these listings, level one, we're going to see gets the three and four star rates. I'll tell you why. Doesn't mean it's a bad listing. Level two and level three, they, they all get five star listings. Level two and level three could be Airbnb plus. But how do you know whether you're level two or level three? So let's let's jump into it. I'm gonna start with level one. Level one is a budget listing. What that means is it's it's the essentials. It's providing a bed, a roof, internet connectivity, electricity, and running water, depending on where you are in the world, that may or may not be hot. Now these listings are predominantly gonna be on the last few pages of Airbnb search, unless you're really narrowing down the price. These are, if price describes any of the levels, it is level one. These are the cheap listings. And unfortunately they do get, these do suffer from three and four star ratings only because Airbnb hasn't done a good job of saying, hey, you know, you can book a budget listing, which is a five star stay. These listings suffer predominantly from lower reviews. Now, the pros is it's cheap. The pros is it's cheap and less upkeep for the host. That oftentimes results in low stars unless you're properly communicating expectations to the guest. The downsides of this uh, for a guest might be um, clumsy check-in. There might not be sufficient heating or cooling, uh, there, and it's probably most definitely missing some common but not essential amenities like a TV. And if there's a balcony, for example, I have a balcony here, there's nice furniture on it. If there's a balcony in the level one listing, uh, there's probably no furniture on the balcony or the balcony is very run down on the furniture. You just not the type of furniture you even want to sit on. It's a no frills place. Okay. The host, it's a, it, the actual space is no frills. It's basic. And the host has decided to not make uh, upgrades and whatnot to the space. Okay. So that's level one. Level two is where we get more interesting. The levels you can also think of as comfort. So how comfortable is the guest going to be in your space? Level two, when we get to level two, I would say the host makes better use of spaces. Spaces is something that I just came up with in uh, two Airbnbs ago that I'm going to review shortly. While the Airbnb listing, the property was small, the host did a great job with spaces. They had all these different spaces that I could hang out at within the house. As is common in, Air, in Airbnbs in Bali, there was a little cabana by the pool. That's an extra space. There was a, a hammock near the kitchen living room area. That's an extra space. Even something like an armchair in a corner of a room or a desk, that's an extra space. So level two starts to add in extra spaces into their Airbnb. In addition, they're gonna level up their amenities. So now in level one, just internet connectivity, no matter the, the, the quickness of it, the reliability of it, level two is you have a reliable internet connection. It may not be fast, but it's reliable. Check-in is now 80% figured out. That level two listing has added some non-essential amenities, like a TV, some nice amenities, but non-essential. TV would be one of them. Heating, cooling system, they may have added this. The kitchen uh, definitely has uh, many amenities, but there's also many amenities missing. Amenities in a kitchen that level two listing would be missing would be things like salt and pepper. The cookware is pro might probably is old, could use replacing. And then they might be missing, totally missing things like strainer, can opener, cutting board, scissors. Okay, pretty common amenities, but not super essential. And finally, a level two listing has a few qualities from the level three category. One example might be like a guidebook. 
it might not be a digital guidebook, but they might have a physical guidebook. The review that I just did of my Airbnb in Penistanen, Bali, I'll, I'll link to it here. They had a physical guidebook where it's better than nothing. Uh, it's kind of disorganized and looks kind of kind of trashy, to be quite honest, but still useful. But that's level two. That's square. That's squarely level two. The video will be back shortly, but Reishi and Luna really had something to say. Level three category. The thing that separates the level three from the level two host is the mindset. I made a video back in uh, 2018 about the mindset. I'm going to also link that video right here. It was, even though I was kind of fumbling my words, the concept is golden. It's hundred percent. It is hundred percent. I really recommend you watch it. It's a six minute video. It's not your space that differentiates you at this level. It's your mindset. It's you, the host, you're the one who, who is the differentiating factor. How does that play out into the real world? The host has thought about things that the guest might want for comfort and purchase them. Remember the difference between the levels is comfort level three. The, the, the guest is very comfortable. They kind of don't even know they're on vacation. They're feeling at home in the listing. I want to say a level three listing is not perfect. That is not perfect. Maybe, maybe I can add that in level four. There's barely any listings that are going to be perfect just based on human differentiation in ourselves. So <clears throat> level three listing is not perfect. Do not think that that's, that's incorrect. Level three listing is damn good, but it's not perfect, obviously. I don't even know if there's a perfect Airbnb for everyone. This is why I say it's not perfect. Now, how does the mindset differ? Here's one way. In a level two listing, as it relates to internet, there's usually a few internet providers in a city. The level two listing might sign up for the fast internet, might sign up for the 50 megabytes per second Wi-Fi from the mediocre internet provider. So they can advertise 50 megabytes per second. You know, The level three host, they're going to go with the more reputable, more expensive provider. They may or may not get 50 megabytes, they may get 20 megabytes or whatever. That's not so important. What is important is this part will show itself through the reviews slowly. It will show itself months. This is months I'm talking about. Show itself through re reviews. And the level three host keeps continually getting better. And the level two host goes, few of them go to level one. Level three differentiates themselves through the reviews, through the things that aren't immediately visible. All three listings are clean. That's, that's a non-negotiable. All three listings are clean. Even if you're buying a budget listing, you're still going to expect a certain minimum level of cleanliness. Now, whereas a level two listing might have purchased a TV, it might be not so good of a TV. Uh, the thing that differentiates level three, they, they purchased a nicer TV. They've spent a little bit more money on a TV, probably a smart TV. They've also done things like they've gotten a full ironing board. It, it annoys me to no ends when I see a, a, a mini ironing board. It makes no sense. Level three category, maybe uh, they've gotten a, another thing is like a full-sized cutting board. Uh, the knives are sharp. Maybe they've provided a kitchen amenity, uh, uncommon kitchen amenities like a measuring cup. Maybe they've provided nice sponges. And maybe another thing is uh, maybe they've provided pillows for both back and side sleepers. The pillows on that here, they're very thick. So that means uh, thick pillows are for side sleepers because there's a lot of space here. But if you're sleeping on your back, there's less space. These are the things that level three category has thought of. It's very common for, uh, it's surprisingly common, I should say, that the shelving in the bathroom is not ideal. This is from personal experience. For how many times I've had a sink in the bathroom with a cabinet right above the sink. And so when I'm going to put water on my face or scoop water to rinse out my mouth, my top of my head bumps against the cabinet because the, just the design was not so, was not well thought out. These, these are the things, shelving and bathroom, who thinks of that? These are the things that level three host is thinking about. These are the things, by the way, where um, Genevieve Porter, I think her name is on Stay Here, the Netflix show. If you watch that show, these are the things she's talking about. She's getting very detailed in how she's setting up the space. The level three, they're going to provide probably some really uncommon amenities like blackout curtains. These curtains not blackout. Level three may, may provide blackout curtains they probably provide a digital guidebook. And in that digital guidebook, they've probably explained things like how to access Netflix on the TV, especially if there's three or four remotes, how to turn up and down the thermostat. In the kitchen, they may have gotten a fancier, a nicer coffee maker, and they may have explained how to work the coffee maker in the digital guidebook. And finally, the, the level three host has some surprise and delight features. 
Now, I've never written or talked at length about what a surprise and delight feature is. It's kind of obvious. It's something where the guest arrives to your space and is surprised and delight. A great example, which I bring up often, is a view. Most of the time, hosts who you put views in their listing, that's a surprise and delight feature because no one's going to book your space because of it. But when they arrive and they see the view, they're going to think, oh, wow, this is unexpected. This is this is beating my expectations for sure. Other surprise and delight features might be like a welcome gift, like a local a bottle of local wine, maybe. See, where you, whereas you definitely wouldn't do that if you're a level one listing, a budget, which is a budget listing, you're not going to provide a bottle of wine. You see how the, there's differences here? You might offer a mid-stay cleaning. You might surprise your guest who stays for 10 days and say, hey, we're going to give you a mid-stay cleaning day four, five, or six. You let me know. Maybe the host helps with a scooter. Here in Bali, we rent scooters or a car rental. Okay, that kind of wraps up what I wanted to say about the three levels of Airbnbs. Tell me in the comments what level you think you're at with your uh, a link to your listing. Also, please ask for any clarifications on this levels things. To be quite honest, I'm still getting a, a grasp on what I actually mean by this. But the the thing I know for sure, the difference between level one, level two, and level three, in addition to mindset, is comfort of the guest or guest comfort. I don't know why I said it like that. Anyways, thanks for tuning in again. See you soon. Happy hosting.